Welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today, let's talk about guilt. Welcome back to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. My name is Kale Hauser. I appreciate you joining me today. Hey, have you ever had anyone in your circle of friends, in your family, in your coworkers, in your community, in your church, on your softball team, on your indoor soccer team, rec league, whatever? Have you ever had anyone tell you, "Hey, you should you should take it easy. You're working really hard. How come you don't come to our events anymore? We don't see you as much as we used to." We really wish you would come hang out with us at Christmas. Why don't you come watch the football games with us on Sundays anymore? We really miss you. Have you ever had anyone tell you these types of things? Like, oh, we, we went out to dinner the other night. We were just talking about, it's been a long time since you've come out to dinner with us. Or you've gone down to the bar to get hammered with us. Or you've gone to the local recreational you-know-what store to pick up a couple bags and then just go back and bake. Have you ever had anyone tell you something like that? Have you ever anyone tried to not necessarily overtly make you feel guilty for not being there, but certainly calling out like, hey, what's going on? It appears that you're no longer interested in doing the things that we're interested in doing. And I'm here to tell you, if no one has told you this before, if you have not had the opportunity for somebody to encourage you in this manner, that you should never, ever, ever make let allow others to feel guilt <laughs> let me start over you should never ever allow others to make you feel guilty for going after your goals after your dreams for being so dedicated and committed to your own success that you are choosing to deprioritize some of the past things in your life because the reality is we all go through these seasons of change we all have these different kind of personalities different person um priorities as we grow and we age, we learn, we expand, we contract, we go through these different levels of commitment, levels of what we value our time with and how we spend our time. Now, you know, one example is we we um, used to spend a lot of time volunteering. We used to spend a lot of time uh, working with uh, our youth group in our church, you know, after we had, you know, become Liz and I, our own our own couple, and we were no longer in school and things like that. Uh, but as things changed, we could no longer commit to those types of, of time commitments because it was a big time commitment at the time. We loved doing it. We loved hanging out with the kids and pouring into them and, and being there for them. But ultimately, as our life changed and as circumstances changed in our life, it was something we had to let go of for a while. And honestly, for an extended while, because, you know, then military and joining and blah, 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 you know, that life life goes on. But there was a, a part of me that it was super guilty because you're like, hey, you're you're in the church. You're supposed to serve and and do all these things. And and this was something that I'd enjoyed doing before. And it's not that I had lost enjoyment of doing it, but it had become more of a chore based on the time and the commitment and the energy it was taking versus what it had been before. And we were just transitioning to a different season of our life, both Liz and I. Now, same thing. Fast forward many years in the future, you know, we we were able to we're down in Florida and we're able to get connected back into our church. We decided to again, hey, let's start serving on the greeting team and you know something easy we can show up and help people make make people feel welcome. And even though we were arguably just as busy, but it was a different kind of service that we could we could do. And there was no guilt associated with it, like oh, you should be doing this and you should be doing all these other things because you know whatever, all the reasons. But a lot of times I want to encourage you, a lot of times that guilt comes from an assumption in our heart, an assumption in our mind. And also potentially, just consider this for a second, it comes from how we judge others and how, because what, what does guilt come from? Guilt comes from judgment. If there's no judgment, there is zero guilt anywhere. But how we judge others is often how we assume and we make that leap of how we are being judged. Because that's our example. That's the voice that's talking in our head. So we assume other people talk like that in their head. And they have those same kind of thought patterns and those same kind of judgments and standards that they hold other people accountable or not accountable, but hold other people to. And the reality is that's just not the case. Um, certainly there are some, you know, standard, popular, not popular, but like commonly accepted uh, judgments that we all have. 
you know, in society. But when it comes down to, you know, how we spend our time, what we put our energy into, what do we put our money into and our resources and, and all the things that occupy our time, usually, again, I'm just throwing this out there for your consideration, usually that comes from your own interpretation of what should or shouldn't be done and, and how you feel guilty for that. Okay, so I'd, I'd strongly encourage you to kind of analyze that little bit of psychology piece uh, as you're going through this process of, of trying to shed that guilt. But many times it very, very much overtly can come from an external source. And that external source could be a family member, could be a loved one, a brother, a sister, a trusted coworker, a colleague, a spouse. And what do you do when that happens? What do you do when you're trying to do this thing. You're like, man, I'm, you know, I used to be that guy, you know, maybe, you know, like Grant Cardone says, like he used to be super into drugs and like not a, not a good guy, but then he transitioned. He's like, that's dead to me now. I'm, I'm this guy now I'm going down this path. Like this is gone. And you cannot allow the people that knew you as this person to keep trying to pull you back and hold you back to continue to be that old person because the two are incompatible oil and water. They're not going to work together. And if that is you, and it doesn't have to be as dramatic as, you know, you were a former drug dealer or, or alcoholic or, you know, in jail or anything like that, although there are certainly many examples of success stories from those kinds of situations into, into massive success, but it could be as simple as, you know, you were working on a, a nine to five job and you were climbing the corporate ladder and you had this future for you, but it wasn't enough for you. And you said, you know, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to, I'm going to step out in faith or I'm going to go out and I'm going to be a missionary, kind of go the opposite direction of, of that. But to you, that's what success is. You're giving up that, that monetary security in order to go serve uh, your church and, and your God in that manner. That could absolutely be it. And people are like, you're crazy. You're going to give up that, you know, $150,000, $200,000 a year salary to go live in Cambodia and talk to people and live in a hut, right? People will try to make you feel guilty for that sometimes. And it can, and it often does happen. But generally, it's it's usually the opposite of when we're walking away from an old life and trying to create the success for us because that to get that success requires changes. It requires a reprioritization of how we spend our time and energy. And a lot of times, the, the family aspect can fall to the, I, I don't wanna say fall to the wayside, but your, your Sunday afternoons are not the traditional Sunday afternoons. Let's go have Sunday dinner and, and hang out with the family. It's now like, no, this is my time to get caught up on my insanely busy week. And you're, you're working through, right? Because most oftentimes the, the classic kind of the tongue in cheek saying is I traded my 40 hour a week job as, you know, this secure account manager over here at this corporation for my 120 hour a week uh, entrepreneur job because I want to be my own boss. Right. It's it's but that's that's the reality, especially in the beginning as an entrepreneur, you're just full on because that's what it takes. You're you're doing everything. You're you're trying to get out of obscurity. You're trying to get your marketing and your sales and and your logistics and blah blah blah. Right, the the million things that we do as entrepreneurs to try to get our business up and viable to where it can be self sustaining. But I do want to encourage you: do not let people that are trying to hold you back out of maybe their own fear, out of their own past failures, out of their own quote unquote concern for you. Do not let that deter you from what you know and you have decided is your mission. It is your mission to be successful in what manner that looks like for you. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I wanted, I wanted to be that voice for you today if, if no one has told you this recently, because there will be. And sometimes they, sometimes those voices, they, they catch us at the most inopportune times. Maybe we just had a setback, uh, you know, because reality, a lot of times being an entrepreneur is hard. It can be lonely. Uh, there's a lot of long hours. There's a lot of setbacks and learning points that we that we go through. Um, it's not all sunshines and rainbows and people transferring you hundreds of thousands of dollars all the time. But sometimes those those not positive comments, those those slights, those little guilt trips can catch us at those moments where it would be easy to just go, you know, what, you're right. I am going to go hang out with the bros on Sunday instead of making that next email sequence or shooting those next videos or coming up with that next product and promoting it, or going through that course. Instead of going down to that conference this weekend where I can make some amazing network connections and learn some incredible things about my industry, 
I'm, I am going to travel up for my brother-in-law's sister or my brother-in-law's cousin's nephew's bar mitzvah, right? <laughs> because your mom is guilting you into, you never show up for family events. Like, oh, I'm, I'm building something amazing, right? You're paying, paying a little bit now so you can pay anything later is kind of the mentality of it. So don't let other people guilt you out of your dreams, out of your mission, out of your own success. Because what we do, we don't allow guilt in our life. We don't allow the judgment of others, especially when it's in comparison to their own life, to dictate what we do with our life, okay? Be dedicated, be commitment, have somebody that will help hold you accountable to that, somebody that is on a similar path or on the same page, at least in their journey, uh, that can be that voice for you. And if that's something that Liz and I can help you with as part of Kale Hauser Leadership, please make sure you check out our mastermind. Um, that is almost exactly what it's built for, is not only to provide you know amazing sales and leadership trainings, but to be that accountability piece, to be that like, hey, I had this massively hard week. Uh, my my sister just came down on me because of you know X, Y, and Z, and I don't know what to do, and I want to give up. And, and we can be that at least um, third-party voice to help you commit to your dreams if that's what you want to do. Make sense? All right, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I look forward to talking to you soon. If there's anything we can do to help you, please reach out, DM, leave a comment, uh, shoot an email, kale at kalehauser leadership. And we'll talk to you soon, no matter where you're in the world. Have a fantastic afternoon. Bye.